podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the US and Europe. Today, you are listening to our AI in Action series, where leading minds in AI from across the world share their story, success, and advice. AI in Action cuts through the hype and explores the true impact of artificial intelligence in our world today. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guests today are Erica Weinstein and Vinny Mann. Erica and Vinny are principals at Flagship Pioneering and co-founders of Profound Therapeutics. Vinny, Erica, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having us. Yeah, it's really nice to be here. And it's great to have you. So guys, let's start with yourself, please, as we do with all our guests. I'd like to get a very brief background from both of you on your own journey in, in technology, particularly on the life sciences side. So Vinny, I'll start with yourself. If you could just give us a, a quick 60 second synopsis of your journey from where you got started and what's led you to where you are today. And then Erica will come to you for the same. Yeah, so I'm Vinny. I've been at Flagship for about four years now. And prior to joining Flagship, I got my effectively my intro to the biosciences when I was doing my PhD at Harvard in the field of immunology. And back then I was studying very basic biology of T cells and how they interact with their world in the skin and how we could leverage that to potentially create better vaccines and therapeutics more generally. But even throughout my journey as a graduate student, I really was enamored by the idea that you could take basic biological concepts, arenas that people really weren't focusing in on to have a big impact in therapeutics and in medicine more broadly. And as a graduate student, as I was nearing the end of my graduate studies, I ended up happening upon the flagship pioneering fellowship program, which really sort of married my interests of basic science while also having a lens towards having this greater impact in the world. And so through the flagship summer fellowship was able to take not just my immunology training, but my training as a scientist and apply that across realms that I had never explored before. And that is really how I ended up where I am today at Flagship with Erica and the team. Great, so I'm Erica Weinstein. I've been at Flagship for over seven years. Similar to Vinny, I'm also an immunologist by training and that's not just why we start companies together, but we have that commonality together. I did my PhD at Mount Sinai in New York, looking at basic biology of T cells. And I think similar to Vinny felt frustrated by the pace of how worries were being translated from the lab into therapeutics that have really outstanding benefits for patients. And so I always felt like I wanted to do something after my graduate degree that was a bit more fast paced, entrepreneurial, and ability to use my scientific background into transformative therapies. I happened upon flagship pioneering and thought, oh my God, this this place sounds amazing. I need to give this a shot and have been here ever since launching companies. Thank you both so much. In the introduction, I mentioned two companies, so I want to help set the stage for our audience. Let's start with flagship pioneering, which will then obviously explain Ellen. So Erica, I'll come to you. Tell us all about flagship pioneering, who you are, what you do, mission of the business. So flagship pioneering is a pretty unique place. It's a venture creation firm where first and foremost, we are scientist entrepreneurs that get to think about really cool areas of science and how to translate those into therapeutics for both human health and also companies in sustainability. And our bread and butter is really building platform-based companies that have the potential to launch many different products or therapeutics from the same platform. So we get to ask pretty broad what if questions that enables us to explore various areas of science. People like Vinny and myself have the opportunity to really think about ways in which we could form human health for specific applications. I think one of our best known companies that we've launched is Moderna and really speaks to the innovative potential with which we like to think about launching companies within biotech space. Very unique, with an incredible reputation in the space, given the number of successful companies that have been spun out of the group, which leads nicely then into Profound. Vinny, I'll come to you. Tell us about Profound Therapeutics. 
what the objective of the business is, and then we'll jump straight into the, the underlying technology that you're using. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll give you a little bit more of an intro as to how Profound originated within the flagship space. As Erica mentioned, we have a very unique process by which we create companies. And one of these phases that we call is the exploration phase. And that's really where we throw all the stuff at the wall and try to figure out what is what are some interesting biological concepts that we can then reduce into practice, into ideas. And so every single flagship company starts with a big what if question and an arena of biology that we're exploring. And so a few years ago, back in 2019, Erica and I were really interested in this space called proteomic dark matter. Now, we hadn't really defined what proteomic dark matter meant at the time, but as part of this exploration, one of the questions that we continued to ask ourselves was, hey, we're seeing that in mass spec proteomic studies, as well as the Human Genome Project, we really thought we were gonna have more proteins than just the 20,000 protein coding genes that you see today on ENCODE or GenCode in these big databases. Imagining all of the observations that we're seeing in biology today and the new phenomena that we've observed over the last decade, what if the human proteome were actually much larger than we imagined? And beyond just having that be this academic discovery, we really wondered what types of impacts that could have on the realm of therapeutics, medicine, and biology. And so in thinking about what, what we would unleash, I think what we like to say is profound is not just expanding, pioneering the expanded human proteome, but really trying to create multiples of the biotechnology industry. So if you imagine instead of 20,000 proteins that make us human, what if there were 100,000 or even a million? Now, what do you do with all of that information? And so for the first time ever at Profound, we're actually beginning to unveil all of these proteins and begin to connect all the dots in terms of genomic information, um, our understanding of disease biology, pathway connections, things like this, to really begin to go and search for therapeutics within what we call our own sort of Profoundry Atlas. And the findings to date have been really remarkable. And it sometimes feels like an exercise where we're trying to boil the ocean, but I think we're in awe of the amazing findings that we've found to date, while also taking a lens to how can we quickly and in a very efficient manner really make that change to, to turn these proteins into those impactful therapeutics that we've really so desired. Yeah, and you talked about the findings so far have been remarkable. I want to spend a little bit of time for our audience who are non-biotech life sciences enthusiasts are working in a day-to-day. -day. Can you help us imagine what the knock-on effect of, of this research can be or what you're working on at Profound Therapeutics, when can it enter into clinical drug discovery and new clinical trials? And what potential impact can it have? In the, I know things don't happen overnight in this field, but in the near term, what impact could this have for, to improve treatment for a range of illnesses? Yeah, that's a really great question. I think one of the things that really motivates us about Profound is that, as Vinny mentioned, the there's a set of proteins and genes that everyone just thought this is the set everyone has. This is the set we're going to be looking at for developing novel therapeutics and drugs. And this is the set that almost any pharmaceutical or biotech company is looking at. What we have at Profound is an entirely new set of proteins that also sit within the context of this old set and allows us now the opportunity to identify new targets or therapeutics that have just people have missed in the past, right? So there's plenty of diseases where we're still looking for proteins that we can, that are the drivers of these diseases. If we think about BRCA1 for breast cancer, or we think about another example would be like insulin for diabetes, how these are very well-known drivers of disease. Everyone understands these are the therapeutics or these are the targets. Now, Profound, we have, as Vinny mentioned, such an expanded set of proteins that we can look at. It now allows us the opportunity to actually potentially turn diseases that we don't know what the cause of them are. We actually, maybe they sit within the Profound Atlas, within our own data set. So it really has the potential to unlock 
many different therapeutics for many different diseases. And I think that's what really gets us out of the bed in the morning is to say for the first time we could really turn some of these diseases where we're just not sure what is a driver or how to even target or how to even ameliorate some of the symptoms for patients, for example. These are some of the things that we really believe hold the potential at profound. Finding new things like the next insulin, the next growth hormone for certain diseases, the next checkpoint molecules. I'm sure that's something that people have heard of for cancer therapeutics, right? These are some of the things that we're really excited about and we believe we have at profound, which could be transformative for patients. You are listening to The Oldest Podcast. When you're looking to scale your team or if you are interested in showcasing your company in a future episode, reach out today. Or if you're in the market for a new role, visit our website to view open positions, www.aldis.com. The topic of this podcast is AI in action. And obviously we have you on here for a reason because there's a lot of interesting use of AI and data on the computational sciences side. So to help our audience understand just how impactful the aspects of AI and data science is at play, are profound, can you talk to us about the data team? What it does day to day, the makeup and background of the individuals, and what it's like to work there as part of the data organization, what impact it's having for profound? Yeah, fantastic question, JP. And let's take a step back and also just talk about how central computation and data are to our team. So I'm going to bring back that 20,000 protein coding genes number as what we really thought were the parts list of what made us human. And now we've really expanded that 10, 20 fold, depending on how you slice the pie. And so that's so many more data points that we now attribute to proteins that people didn't really know existed. Now, layering on top of that, you not just have those proteins and their sequences that were previously appreciated, which allow a, think, make us question effectively, now what, what do we define as a protein? And so you can imagine use cases for AI there, but really everything that we're working on is derived from, not so derived from the human genome. It's all encoded within our DNA. And so what we're able to do is actually leverage decades of research into genomics, transcriptome, you must have heard of RNA sequencing in certain lights, but really taking into account all of these potential layers and tools that others have already built to tackle those known 20,000 protein coding genes that we then begin to apply and sort of network to the proteins that we now have in this revised atlas or catalog of proteins that we believe we have. In part, The data science component really is its core and central to everything that we do. So if we're trying to find growth hormones, insulins, or EPOs, what does that actually look like in the space of our atlas computationally? So every experiment that we start, every discovery campaign that we launch, we actually start with, let's try to build logic gates of information from what exists in our atlas to then figure out how many of those types of proteins we have and what we're going to do in the lab to be able to test them and enable them therapeutically. So that's somewhat the role that data science in general plays. And as you can imagine, we are not working at the scale of one or two proteins. We're working at the scale of thousands on a daily basis. And so making sure each of those is integrated with the functional assays that we're building in-house and the different modalities of data that we've brought in, whether it's going to throw out, I'm going to throw out some biology jargon here, but flow cytometry or an ELISA or a CRISPR screen. So taking those different modalities of data and thinking about how to intersect those in an effective and quick way to get at these questions is central to what we do on a daily basis at Profound. Now, what's really interesting on top of that is this AI component, right? So I mentioned that we have leveraged tools that other people have built, and I'll use AlphaFold as an example, right? People thought that the 20,000 protein coding genes that we have as humans, as well as proteins that we've discovered in bacteria that you see conserved in other species, are really the key to figuring out the, the structure of a protein and thereby its potential function or how you could drug it and things like that. And what's interesting is that when you begin to apply AlphaFold to our own proteins, it doesn't always work. 
And that's because our parts list is now expanded and different. So we intrinsically have this new definition of what it means to be a protein and even how the protein is made from the RNA transcript. So the central dogma, basically, you have the DNA in your cell and that gets turned into RNA, which then becomes protein. And so we now have insights into how we go from RNA to protein and how those protein sequences may actually potentially function. And so we have to begin to build our own tools that we can hopefully share with the world someday soon that help us disentangle what these proteins are, what functions they perform, and how we could really be able to leverage them in biology and therapeutics more generally. And I think one thing that I always like to add is that when we think about the Human Genome Project that was launched 30 years ago, right, was such a big advancement in our time. And the tools that people had available then both to discover protein coding genes and all the proteins and then turn those into therapeutics is, is taking us to where we are today, right? But with the with Profound, now we're trying to both leverage all those learnings and incorporate AI and machine learning to take us to the next level to do that faster, better, smarter, which is some of the examples that Vinny gave, I think, is really where the intersection of AI comes into play at Profound as well. Because I want to finish on just getting your take on the roadmap ahead. You launched Profound in 2020, so you're just coming into your third year officially as a business. And the first few years are always the most challenging, particularly for the startup. But given the backing that you have with Flagship, it's a different type of startup. It's almost the best of both worlds because it's it's the excitement of a startup with the backing of a a huge organization with all the resources there to make you guys very successful. So when you look at the roadmap ahead, particularly the next 12 to 18 months, what are you most excited about for the near term future of Profound? What message do you have for an audience of AI and data professionals, many of whom are in the biotech space looking out for new and exciting companies to watch out for? Yeah, I think at Profound, and this also harkens back to what we do at Flagship, which is building platform companies. We are focused on really validating the platform that we've built here and demonstrating that it has tremendous value across many different diseases, questions, applications. And so that's really the roadmap that we're following. We're a small, nimble group that's actually been able to do quite a lot in the few years that we've been around and continuing to build our platform everything from some of the computational and AI tools to some of the more wet lab experimental tools to validate our questions is really what we're going to be focused on over the next couple of years and really lining up a path for clinical preclinical validation. So I think just like any startup, we've had to think about what is the best way that we can prove some of the proof points that we're looking for with our team. And we're really excited about the journey going forward and feel Pretty excited about what we've been able to do so far. I think the beauty of what we do at Flagship and the ability to create companies that otherwise wouldn't exist by us asking these crazy risky questions is the emphasis on the platform itself. And looking at what we call it Flagship Bio Platforms, we're building not just, we're not just getting the golden eggs from the goose, we're actually trying to create the better geese that are going to lay more golden eggs in some sense. And I think we have, with flagships backing, the ability and the mandate almost to be able to focus on making sure that all of those components are really well built out. And as Erica mentioned, we do have a very small and hopefully agile team that's tackling all of these on a daily basis in an interdisciplinary format. And I think what's what has been exciting for us over the last three years is that Three years ago, we didn't know that these proteins really existed. We just had a belief. Now we know not only that they exist, but over the last six to nine months have really shown that they have functions that could be important to modulate as drugs or as therapeutic targets across various diseases. And it's it's gratifying to see that a little bit, but showing that we could potentially apply that across so many different therapeutic areas, disease areas, and really become and and be that not only a therapeutics company in and of ourselves, but also this partner and 
knowledge base for the rest of the biotechnology industry in terms of the proteins that we have and how we could begin to tackle this massive new universe and landscape. Vinny, Erica, thank you both so much for coming on today and talking to us. Great insight into Flagship as an organization, how it spins out these incredible organizations, and then Profound as one of its newer ventures. Anytime we have guests on the show talking about the impact of AI in the biotech space, it's always incredibly exciting because the long-term implications can really change you know, entire divisions of, of clinical research and subsequently healthcare as a whole. We appreciate you sharing with us the journey so far. It sounds like there's a lot more to do. And for people listening who are interested in the biotech space and applications of AI, it sounds like it could be a great place to work. So we appreciate it. Thank you so much. We wish you guys the best of luck in months and years to come. And we look forward to having you back on the show in the near future. Thanks, JP. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Aldis Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.aldis.com, to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.